EY's innovation journey is a story about a 170-year-old organization embracing innovation to create the future of the professional services industry. As EY's global chief innovation officer, the question at the top of my mind every day is, what are the innovations that can create the most value for our organization, our clients, and society overall? Where will the disruptions to our business come from? Who will be our competitors tomorrow? Our innovation ambition? In this fast changing world, innovation is a capability that allows us to imagine a future with agility, resilience, and flexibility to address disruptions from any direction. Artificial intelligence is a technology that taps human creativity, ingenuity, and problem solving to create enormous value for businesses and society. At EY, we're using AI to transform how we conduct services for our clients, increasing accuracy, improving productivity, and ultimately reducing risk across all sectors and geographies. That enables our clients to better serve their customers, manage risk, and increase their business resilience. Our next wave innovation strategy enables us to develop advanced technology solutions that create new revenue streams and drive massive efficiencies. Together, these will help us close a $6 billion overall organization-wide growth gap to our fiscal year 25 ambition, giving our organization the resilience it needs in the face of fierce competition. Nigel, as EY's global AI leader, can you tell us about your vision and strategy for how EY leverages AI? Yeah, at EY, we have about 300,000 professionals around the world with deep expertise in accounting, law, tax, auditing, supply chain, and more. Their expertise, creativity, and agility is EY's strength. So we take a different approach to AI. Rather than focusing on automation, we focus on augmentation. We use AI to make our people more productive, more effective, and happier. For example, we read a lot of business documents at EY, everything from employment agreements to invoices to regulations. We read them in more than 100 different languages, in dozens of industries, and for thousands of clients. These documents are often long and complex and are needed to support complex accounting or legal determinations. AI can help. Sure, it can make some of these simpler determinations automatically. For example, when does this contract expire? But more importantly, it can help our people to hone in on the most relevant parts of the document. It can provide related documentation or policies, and it can allow our people to make better decisions faster. So how do we get there? We're embedding AI in everything we do. This will take time, but last year alone, we developed and deployed more than 20 new AI tools across EY that help with everything from marketing compliance to returning to the office. The beauty of this approach is that as we embed AI to augment our people, that same AI can learn from them. It can learn to take on more and more of the mundane work, freeing them up to deliver more insights and more value. Can you give us some examples of how this is being used? Of course, let me give you two great examples, reading documents and analyzing transaction data. It's our ambition to be the best in the world at reading and interpreting business documents with AI. Today, we support more than 130 different document types. For example, we apply AI to reading K-1 tax forms. These K-1 packages are incredibly complex to read. But by using AI to augment our people, we've reduced the review time by up to 80%, while simultaneously improving accuracy by up to 95%, and reducing the cost to extract information by 70 to 80%. And this same approach can be used on every single tax form that we handle. In EY, we also analyze lots of transaction data, hundreds of billions of transactions per year. AI is really important for this kind of data. We can use AI to find anomalies, to improve data quality, and to classify transactions. For example, we use AI to analyze indirect tax transactions. Previously, this was a very labor-intensive, very manual process. But by using AI to augment our people, we can process millions of transactions with much less effort and with higher quality. The AI quickly learns to correctly process 95% of transactions, while the more complex ones are still handled by people. Our AI begins by assisting a human and then learns to take on more and more of this process over time. And because we've humans in the process, we can rapidly adapt the capability to other types of transactions and to other types of classification, 
for example, capital allowances or trade tariffs. What are the guiding principles underpinning EY's AI work? Having impact with AI is hard, especially in a 170-year-old organization like EY. So you have to anchor on some clear principles. You have to be clear about the ambition and the mandate. What are you trying to achieve and do you have a clear mandate to achieve it? Probably the biggest challenge with AI is that it's both transformative and ubiquitous. It will literally change everything. So what are you trying to achieve? Is your ambition to address some use cases and proofs of concept, or is it true transformation? And the answers to these questions will take you down very different paths. Our ambition here at EY is true transformation. You need a clear vision, especially if you're aiming for transformation. Our vision is augmented intelligence. AI is a tool to make our people faster and smarter, to give them superpowers. This vision can help motivate people, but it's also a really important tool to align efforts across a large organization. Trust is critical. For us, it's incredibly important that we build AI responsibly in ways that reflect the values of EY and of the societies in which we live. It's also important that we have diverse participation in how AI is designed, developed, deployed, and monitored. And so recruiting and retaining diverse talent is really important. You have to remember that AI is hard. It requires collaboration with the business, technology, risk management, and other parts of the organization. It's hard in all the ways that digital transformation is hard, just more so. So Nigel, where are we as EY in our AI journey today? It's been an incredible journey so far. We've come an incredibly long way. We've established more than 10 centers of excellence around the globe with hundreds of AI scientists, engineers, and product developers creating and acquiring AI products and solutions. We have a large, active community across EY with more than 4,500 members in our global network. We've deployed more than 20 products in more than 100 countries, and they're used on more than 100,000 engagements. And we have deep collaborations across the AI ecosystem with academia, technology companies, startups, and thought leaders. But we have a long way to go for AI to truly be part of EY's DNA. The next phase of our journey is about scaling and will require even more engagement with service lines, regions, and engagement teams. It's easy to underestimate the skills and infrastructure you need to deliver AI at scale in the real world. When companies start out, it's natural to focus on the AI engineers and data scientists who develop the models. But to get to enterprise scale products in the real world, you need an ecosystem of skills and experience, data integration engineers, software developers, DevOps engineers, project managers, specialists, security staff, and more. To guide these teams, you need experienced managers who can be hard to find at AI's current level of market maturity. And you need the operational infrastructure to support teams to collaborate and scale solutions from lab prototypes to enterprise-grade products. We have seen a challenge of scaling AI in EY without document intelligence solutions. Once a product is developed, rolling it out globally requires training on good quality data for each territory. It then needs to be tested against rigorous security and quality standards and integrated with wider enterprise systems and governance processes. Each of these steps is complex and requires multiple global teams to work together to solve the unique challenges of a system that learns. Data is the fuel that powers AI. So getting data right is crucial to realizing the benefits of AI. In our experience, it's a challenge of two parts. First, you need the right fuel, the right data, to achieve differentiation through your AI-powered business operations. And second, you need to consider how AI uses that data in an ethical way that sustains trust and therefore your competitive advantage. So the challenge of giving AI the right data to work with is that you need more than the enterprise data that sits within your organization's own business applications. You need that data, plus you need data outside your company walls from your ecosystem of third-party relationships or shared by your customers. You also need what we call derived data, that data created through predictions and data science, such as recommendations. And you need uncaptured data, all the data that you don't have today that powers experiences and you will need to capture using the Internet of Things, sensors, mobiles, or other devices. Now, to provide differentiation around your AI, you need to bring all four of these categories of data together, and that is challenging. 
you need a modern approach to data integration, such as unifying your data through a data fabric. This provides trusted real-time insights that can improve your speed to market and give you the agility to react more quickly to changing requirements. You also need robust data governance that ensures quality and consistency across all of your data. Using data in an ethical way for AI means evaluating for bias and hiring a diverse team to mitigate against bias. It means upholding privacy, building privacy into AI by design. And it means being transparent with all parties about how you use their data in your AI applications. If you don't do this well, people will stop sharing their data with you. They'll stop trusting your AI and its predictions and recommendations. And if that happens, you lose the competitive advantage that led you to invest in AI in the first place. So trust in AI is fundamental because it's one of the biggest barriers to AI adoption. This is because AI systems fail in ways that we have a hard time predicting, making AI more difficult for users and organizations to trust. The number one root cause is that AI is probabilistic. It's not rules-based like the computer systems we're used to. That means AI outcomes are less predictable and it can fail in ways we aren't expecting. Addressing trust is important because of a lack of trust may limit the cool opportunities for AI to transform our lives. AI is already showing its potential to transform so many areas, from access to education, healthcare, and finance. It can also create huge competitive advantage as enterprises seek to create more personalized experiences for their customers, people, and society. To build trust in AI, we need to embed trust by design from the beginning. We need to ask smarter questions up front such as what could be the unintended consequences of our AI system? Where could it go wrong? How might stakeholders be affected? We need to ask questions, not just about performance, but also about social and ethical considerations. To answer these questions well, we need a broader, more diverse set of people at the design table, defining the problems we want to solve as a society and thinking about how we can solve them without creating new unintended consequences. More diversity helps us to sustain trust through new governance and controls geared to AI's dynamic learning processes and broader use cases. Governance that applies principles around bias and fairness, resiliency and explainability, transparency and performance, as we design, build and use AI solutions. To help organizations build and sustain trust in AI, we have developed our EY Trust AI framework. It's a framework that enables organizations to adapt their existing governance and control frameworks for the different risks of AI technologies. For example, our framework is designed to recognize the iterative nature of AI models and the need for broader post-production monitoring of AI systems. It also helps organizations bring more diverse perspectives into the design stage by requiring input from different disciplines early on these are, and many other aspects of the framework help organizations gain early understanding and experience with AI and allow them to right-size their governance practices as they scale their AI programs. One sector where we see huge interest and value in this approach is healthcare. Providers want to use AI to make health outcomes and experiences for patients more preventative, timely, and positive. But they face many ethical and social challenges to get there. For some, it could be how to handle sensitive personal data, for others, it could be the ethics around minority groups for whom fewer data points could affect AI predictions. Our framework helps manage these challenges in a way that is transparent and open, building provider and patient trust in the AI system and its use of personal and sensitive data as the positive benefits of AI are achieved for all. We know that getting AI right is the future of UI, but it's more important than that. If we build trusted AI, if we help our clients embrace AI's opportunities and manage the risks, the benefits to society can be huge. The shift is already happening. AI is not the future, it's changing EY and society now.